I made a video a while back about how a particular lens changed my career. It was the Zeiss Milvers 100mm. Uh, and since then, obviously, my camera setup has changed a lot. And I've been using this now for a good amount of time, over a year, maybe two years, can't quite remember. But I've been using it for a while. Now, this monstrosity here is the Cambo Actus. It is a technical camera. And that means that we have things like rise and fall, which is at the back of the camera here, going up and down. We have a bellows focus, so we can really focus close and really adjust that focus very precisely. We have swing, which is the lens going left to right. And then we have tilt, which is the lens going up and down like this. And this is a whole host of interesting things. Um, I won't bore you with all of them now, but it allows you to do something called the Schimpflung principle, which I always pronounce incorrectly. But basically you can do a cool focusing thing where you choose the front and back of the image you tilt this down to focus on the front, you move this to focus on the back, you tilt it a bit more, move it a bit more, tilt it a bit more, move it a bit more, back, forwards, back, forwards, back, forwards. The whole image magically comes into focus. Um, it's great. It means you don't have to focus stack. You can also do cool things where if you're shooting something with side on and there's two items staggered, you can swing the lens to the left and you can then twist that plane of focus around. Does some great things, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about how it's changed my work, how it's changed my career. Now, when I started with the Milvus lens, I just got into a particular style of photography which was very bold and graphic. I just moved into that, and that was the lens which I used beginning that work. Um, but one of the big issues I found I was having was I couldn't get enough in focus, and I was always focused, I can like do little adjustments with this manual lens to try and get the whole thing bang sharp. But this lets me do that, and this allows me to do a shot with like moving liquids, a splash shot, and get everything in focus. So if we're using, if you're trying to freeze liquid, if you don't know this, you have to use a very low flash power to get a high flash duration, um, or a fast flash duration, or short is a better way to put it. But in order to get that, your depth of field has to be like compromised. You have to be at like 5.6 to get enough light in, unless you want to bump your ISO up and lose your image quality, which we don't. But this here lets me get past that. I can be at that and I can adjust the camera's movement to get the whole frame in focus still. It's brilliant. It allows me to use a Mamiya six by seven lens. This lens draws an image circle of six by seven centimeters. It is like putting a full frame lens on a cropped crop sensor. You're just getting the very sharpest of the center of that image circle only. There's no vignetting, there's no pin cushioning, there's no fall off of light, there's no softness at the edges because the edges are somewhere at the side of the camera. So that, that's a great benefit to my style of work. It's a real useful thing. Now, something which you don't know will be useful, and this is something I didn't really think of. Like, I'm on a big salon stand here. I want to move the camera up, you do this. Up it comes. Down it goes. Want to move it up a little bit? There we go. But what if that's not the right little bit? And it, it's quite, yes, it's smooth, yes, it's easy, but sometimes you need a really specific small movement. Maybe we need to move the camera a bit to the left, just a little bit. Maybe we need to go a little bit up or down. And of course, this can also change the perspective. And you can see over the drink or under the drink from different angles. There's so many great things you can do, so many creative possibilities that you can't do with a standard camera. Now, do you need to get this? No, absolutely not. I was making money from photography way before I had this. I was with an agent before I had this. But I do think it's a great bit of kit. It also makes you realize how obsolete the camera is. So I've just got a 5DSR on the back of mine. Here it is. 5GSR on the back, it's just a sensor and a shutter. Anything else they're trying to market to me here doesn't exist. It's a sensor and a shutter, and on the other side, we've just got our cable ports, so I've got my tether cable, and then I've got a PC sync cable for flash, because if you're doing any splash photography, you don't want to rely on wireless triggers syncing upright and definitely working, um, so we always have a PC sync cable on there as well. And then we just keep them nicely tidied up and hanging on this. I've also got, if you see just here, this is a plate to put one of those big Sony video batteries on, which then goes to a dummy battery in the camera. Again, very useful. I used to mains power it, but I found that the cable was always in the way, and if we're changing set or moving around, it became a bit of an issue. But this way, I just bang the battery in there. It's good to go. There's no real, like, drama. It lasts a whole day, even with Capture One running live view through a tether cable. Um, it's just, it's a great bit of kit. So this is it, this is the camera, this is the one that changed my career. My work is so much better because of this. And you know how I harp on about the kit doesn't matter. This is one of those times where kit has made a genuine impact on my work. It's absolutely allowed me to do things that I couldn't do without it. And, and I really enjoy it as well. One of the main reasons I bought this, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you here, 
I didn't really understand what it was I was getting into. I, obviously, I've used a large format camera before and I understand the concept of it, but I didn't really, I, I didn't know I needed it. Um, but what I liked was this light, oh, we're gonna change the aperture. We're going to change the, it's all very tactile. And before this, we just focused the camera, changed the aperture and everything in capture one. Camera was up in the ceiling somewhere and fired the shot, but now it's much more, hands-on approach and for someone who loves old film cameras this is such a nice experience and that shouldn't be a reason to spend thousands of pounds but th that that was if hand on heart the reason i bought it and then the final thing i want to show is this here now the, these lenses they have a depth of field no they don't they have a, a little thing to put the aperture preview down the depth of field preview um, and because there's no communication between camera and lens i was taping it down but one of my lovely patrons i'm not sure whether i'm allowed to share his details in here so i won't for now but i will if he says yes next time made me this so it holds it in place um, i'm sure if you want one of these he will happily make you one for us for a fee um, they're brilliant and it, and it solves a problem and it looks really cool but i know someone's going to ask what's the gold thing on there um, but it holds that little bit down there it's just really beautiful very simple I like the gold colour as well. It adds a bit of bling to the setup. But there we go. This is my camera system. I'd love to know what you're shooting on at the moment. If you're thinking of getting a Cambo, and also, I'm getting a really fancy one soon, and I, there'll, there'll be a video on that. So, so make sure you do subscribe if you want to see what like 70,000 pounds of Cambo looks like on a shoot, because we will be playing with it. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.